Welcome back to Homes with Joan. I am super excited to be here in Oxford filming with a good friend of mine, Brenda Bronson, who is an amazing lender. And we're going to talk about what's really happening in the lending world today. Of course, we all know there's been ups and downs. We get all this drama on you know, our, our local TV stations and, and nation TV stations. We want to know what's happening here in our community. So, Brenda, you want to share a little bit about yourself and what I can. you know what yeah. what, what yes, your yes. business is all about. Yes. So, first of all, I am I, I am a loan officer at Cross Country Mortgage, and Cross Country Mortgage is has been serving Metro Detroit area for years. Um, I have been in doing residential lending since about 1990 ish, 1991. So, a very long time. Um, I have been helping families here in Metro Detroit uh, about 26 or 27, 28 years. It's all blending, right? <laughs> all the years are blending. <laughs> and prior to helping families figure out their financing, I was an underwriter. Oh. So in the business a long time, and the underwriter, as you know, is the person that stamps the loan approved or declined or says you've got problems. Yeah. So I absolutely love what I do. Still to this day, I just love it. And and it shows because the clients that we've worked with together, the first thing after I've referred uh, a client over is like, oh my gosh, Brenda's just like my sister. <laughs> and I, I'll tell you, you know, we all hear and we're all nervous about who is the underwriter. It's yeah. kind of like the Oz behind the screen. Yeah. No, there is no name very associated scary. Very scary. to an underwriter. But you always hear your lender say, well, we'll get it through underwriting. So with your experience of knowing what the underwriter is looking for as now switched over into the loan officer place, that is, that's stellar. Um, really and truly, you may not find a lot of loan officers who have your immense experience. And I don't mean experience with maturity, even though we know that goes hand we in know, hand. We know, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> what age. it also means is that the amount of examples that you have and, yeah. and the stories that you can share with our, with our audience today in regards to what's happening in our today market, which is, you know, uh, we don't know every day, you know. Every day is different. Yeah, but you're on top of it. You know what's going on. You're not a fly-by-night company. Right. All of a sudden, we see these mortgage companies that, where did this come from? So yeah. I'm going to just recommend any person who's looking for a mortgage in today's market, make sure you're working with a professional and someone who's had experience because that experience will give you so much more options and um, knowledge as to what's happening in, in the market. So Brenda, you bring that to us today. So Thank you. Um, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. So we are, you know, so right now what I'm wondering is what is the difference between a loan officer and me going into my bank? What, what's the difference there? Oh, goodness. Okay. So, uh, um, well, banks make all their money with their depository accounts. Okay. So their big profit center, honestly, is their checking and their savings. So it is very common. I mean, we hear it all the time. I'm going to go to XYZ Bank because I've been banking there for 25 years and they're amazing. And they could be amazing. But there are a lot of big banks that just, and there are articles out there actually saying they wish they could get out of the mortgage industry. They have to stay in because of the consumer. Unfortunately, it is a very, very small, small, small profit center for a lot of banks, mm -hmm. and they have to do it, but they don't pull a lot of resources to it. So um, where we are 100% residential lending all day, every day, and every resource we've got at our company goes straight to how do we do this better? How do we care for the consumer that's needing the financing for their home? Sure. Sure. Well, that makes a big difference. I mean, it's like, you know, going to a uh, tailor to have your shoes made. You know, a tailor might know yeah. what's the best kind of shoes to wear, but they don't know how to, to match it together. Yeah. So I completely agree with you. I th believe in the mortgage lending industry because of the experience and the expertise. You know what's happening. That's 100% of your day. Yeah. So really, really important um, to know the difference of those two areas. The next question I have for you, um, Brenda, is 
Okay, so you always hear you have to have 20% down. Ah, 20% <laughs> down. That's, Don't pay PMI. Yeah, 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 yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about, and I know there's multiple opportunities out there for different down payments and yes. different programs that yes. you have, but can you kind of talk us through that fairy tale of yes. the 20% down? Well, PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, mm -hmm. is this extra cost that's added into your monthly mortgage payment. Mm -hmm. And people think, I got to have 20% down because I'm not paying that PMI because it, it, people think it's such a waste of money. Mm -hmm. Well, as the years have gone by, the higher your credit score, the lower the PMI. I have a client that was borrowing, let, let's, I, I'm going to say like 300000 mm -hmm. The PMI for them to do 10% down payment was like $31 a month. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So in the olden days, I call it, when <laughs> I started in the 90s, right, it was significantly higher. It was one size fits all, period. Okay. So PMI, although it, it, is it a waste, is it not a waste? Well, the question is for your particular financial situation, should you scrape every single penny to do 20% down? Should you wait and rent? two more years to get 20% down to avoid this small little cost? That's the question. And that is where the difference between somebody maybe not as experienced and somebody experienced like me, a mortgage person should not be just about your transaction and trying right. to get that deal, mm -hmm. which is what this industry is really mostly trained to do. Okay. I think we need to look at a person's finances as a big picture. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you got this much money, you are renting now, you know, rent, and it's all over social media, so I hate to like say yeah. it, but rent's at a 100% interest rate, right? Yeah. It is. You don't have a penny going to anything for you, for later, and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of home ownership. Absolutely. So, I think people need to be educated on options, and maybe for a particular client, 20% down is brilliant, mm -hmm. and maybe it fits them. And maybe they still have money left over and they're not scraping every penny, you know? Right. But maybe that client should still consider 10% down and look at the payment. Right. And when you're working with a lender who actually is looking at your whole picture and you have to be transparent with your lender, you know, you don't want to be holding anything back at any point of the time. This is a time when you're actually like feeling fully fully exposed. I will tell you a yeah. lot of my a lot of my clients, yeah. you know, when I start saying lender, it's like, "Oh my gosh, here comes all this stuff." And then the lender wants so much information from me yes. that uh, I feel kind of comfortable because it's, you know, you never want to completely share all your secrets with folks, but your lender is one of those people. When we return, we're going to talk a little bit more about how to do that savings and how to find the right lender for you. What is dementia? Is it the same as Alzheimer's? What is vascular dementia, Lewy body, FTD, TBI, and CTE? If someone has memory loss, does that mean they have dementia? Millions of Americans ask these questions every day. I did too, and I learned. My wife Ginny developed dementia. I didn't know what to do or what was coming next. I'm Kevin Jamison, volunteer and president of the Dementia Society of America. I'm excited to offer you a free guide to understanding dementia. It's filled with facts about dementia, care planning, how doctors can help, and ways to keep your brain as healthy as possible. The Dementia Society of America is a national nonprofit, and we're ready to answer your questions. You want to live life to the fullest. I know that. Ginny did too, and I'm confident that we can help. Get your copy of the guide. Go to 1-800-Dementia.org or call 1-800-Dementia. Thank you. So welcome back. There's so much to discuss in this uh, show today. 
it, it's such an important conversation to have with the right lender, the one who has that experience, the one that has had multiple deals. <laughs> I don't even know, Brenda, how many loans you've closed. <laughs> Thousands. But, but, you know, with that experience and with that knowledge, you know, we need to continue to educate folks, even yes. if it's your first home or it's your third, fourth, fifth. Today's market is different than what it was 10 or 15 years ago, like yes. you mentioned with the PMI insurance. People really need to talk to that lender to really truly understand what is, what's going on today. And some people think, um, like if I put more down on a piece of property that they're looking for, you know, I'm not gonna owe as much on my home, but how much does that really change in your payment? And what, what well, information? It's funny because a lot of clients think, you know what, I'm just going to save a little more or I'm going to take more of my savings to put down on my house and make my payment way lower. The problem is it might only, ch for, for a $10,000 extra down payment, reducing okay. your loan amount by 10000 takes your payment down with today's rates around $65 That's a month. That's it? Yeah. You're kidding me. That's my it. It's cash, a real shocker, actually, to most <laughs> my people. My cash is only going to bring me that well, much. Well, the reason is, is you're doing a 30-year fix, typically. Sure. Which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of the 30-year fix. You can always, always take extra and make it your choice to send in extra money and pay your loan yeah. off. Mm -hmm. But maybe you want to take a vacation. Maybe it's Christmas. Sure. And maybe that payment you don't want to send in to be higher but you can always have, you have options when you do a 30 year, but you know, when you look at doing $10,000 more yeah. down on a car loan, that's a four or a five year car loan. So right. now you're talking about making a significant difference in a payment. Sure. But not on a mortgage. Yeah. And, and that's what I think is so important for people to really talk. Once again, I can't, I can't say it enough because of course I'm, I'm the real estate salesperson. I, my expert is buying and selling real estate for my client. That's why we need to make sure that you're finding that lender that's going to give you that wide range of options for what fits for you. It's never a one-size-fits-all. We know mm -hmm. that just doesn't work that way. And so as that mortgage payment goes and as you're talking about down payment, um, the other thing is what about credit? You know, you mentioned credit. Um, and your credit score with the PMI insurance. Yes. When I'm looking to purchase a home, what are those things I should or shouldn't do in regards to what I currently have um, my debt in? Well, one of the biggest problems is people want to fix their own credit before they reach out to somebody like me to get pre-approved. Okay. So they will work a year or two to fix their credit and then they're ready to call me. Unfortunately, a lot of times they're fixing the wrong things. So, oddly, when you have collections, especially medical, that you have allowed to go by the wayside for some time, and now you want to go buy a house, I would never touch those collections, especially the medical. When you retouch, the longer a collection or something derogatory, uh, the longer back it is, okay. the less it starts affecting your credit score. So when somebody says, oh, God, I let that collection occur in college, I got to clean those up. When you now go making a payment, you're drawing, a ten it's like you're drawing attention and bringing that bad derogatory thing to the forefront. Gotcha. And so now this thing that's gone away and your credit scores got decent, but you think it's got to be gone, now you can make your credit scores actually go down. Okay. So what I would do is, again, talk to, before you decide to be your own credit expert, talk to someone, talk to somebody, a professional, it could be me if you'd like, <laughs> and, and figure out, should I do this for my credit? What should I do? We have these things called credit simulators nowadays. We did not have that in the olden days, I say. <laughs> but the credit simulator is something that most, well, I'm not going to say most, some of us have the ability at our companies to run for somebody oh. and say, hey, your credit's fine, or you know what? We could raise your score about 40, 40 points uh, if you pay this one little card down by $500. Don't pay the whole thing off because you know, maybe you need that money for down payment or something, but only $500 and we could raise your score 40 points. And it may say, don't touch that collection from four years ago. 
that, very fascinating. <laughs> and that is what is so, so valuable. I really hope you're listening to this today. That is the information that is so valuable. You know, it's kind of like me going into a home that says, oh, you know, I want to sell it. And they say, well, but I need to remodel my whole uh, garage. And, and those aren't the things that are going to be, be relevant in, today, in today's market. What's more important is that you are reaching out to those professionals, like, like you say, and I'm sure, Brenda, you have, clients that you've been working with for over a year or two years to get them to where they want to be. It's, it's, it's creating that relationship with someone that you yeah. trust and has the knowledge of what's happening in today's market, not someone who's coming in and going and, you it's know. It's taking time with people. It is. Whether it's somebody with excellent credit or needs a little help. Um, I have, it's, it's taking time in our industry in lending is you call your bank because you bank there like we talked yeah. about or you call the biggest advertisement company you see. Yeah and you make a call and they have a quick conversation. You fill out an online application um, and, and then they issue your pre-approval and then they say, yes, you wanted to do XYZ down or you wanted to do FHA and you qualify fine. Yep. Here's your pre-approval letter, call me when you find a house. Yeah. There's just zero education and I, there's so much to, I mean, you are not buying a flat screen TV. No. <laughs> we are not buying a flat screen TV here. Yeah. And so to, the consumers are taught, because um, I talk to consumers all the time, know, even yeah. great ones referred by some yeah, of your clients yeah, that yeah. are amazing. Yeah. The consumers are taught you call and get the lowest rate. Right. And sometimes the lowest rate can cost you a lot more money than necessary, and you didn't even realize your payment only goes up a little, mm -hmm. but you lessen. There's so much to go over and educate, whether it is, again, you said your fifth house yeah. or your first house. A lot of it can't be found on Google, and most of it's not explained. Our industry is not trained to spend a lot of time with the consumer. Yeah, and, and you can see that with different lending. I mean, I have, with, with my clientele, we're, we go all over the place. I, my personal way, as I've spoken before, yeah. is I offer three different lenders because I can't really steer a client into a lending situation. But one of the things I do know is that Brenda, of course, is on my list because she has that ability to make people, number one, feel comfortable about their lending experience and educating them. If there's one thing you need to do is educate yourself in regards to what is the best program for you. I know there are hundreds of programs out there. We're not, once again, sorry to say it again, it is not a one-size-fit-all mm -hmm. industry. It is truly about getting what fits your lifestyle, how you want to live in the future. Do you want to be home poor? Do you not want to be home poor? These are all things that are very important conversations to make sure you have with your lender so yeah. you get put into the right program. We'll be right back, and we'll finish up with you know those most important things to do when you're getting ready to call your lender. Finding life beyond Earth is no longer a dream. It's a discovery that will likely be made during our lifetime. And it will change everything. We are home to over 100 explorer scientists. Our purpose is singular. To understand the origins and prevalence of life and intelligence in the universe so that we might lay the framework for humanity's next steps to the stars. We are the SETI Institute. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna be talking about 
why you're going to call that lender and you're going to call that lender today because we need to get you involved in that conversation with the lender um, to make sure that you're making the best decision for your future because remember your number one investment overall right Brenda yeah is is your home it's going to make it we're still in a high equity range right now um, you can make a lot of money in that purchase of that home but you want to make sure that your financing fits right for your family and for your future so we know we've been talking a lot about those darn interest rates uh, and where the they're at. In the, room. <laughs> the elephant in the room. Yeah. Every and that's a stumbling block for a lot of people today. They're not sure if they should sell. They're not sure if they should buy. Oh my gosh, these interest rates are killing us. So what what do you tell a client that calls you regarding what's going on with interest rates today? Oh, it depends on the client. Okay. But first of all, I think it is a fascinating story to share that I bought my first house. And got an interest rate of almost 9%. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the market is extremely cyclical. The yeah. rates will always come down. So nobody will ever keep their mortgage for 30 years at 9%. Like right. I got that, and three years later, the rates got down. So I paid a higher payment, which, by the way, was only, you know, maybe for the house I bought was 160 or something uh -huh. difference between my newer rate and my icky rate <laughs> and but I only did that for three years but what's fascinating is in three years that house went up maybe 30 or 40 thousand yeah, for my very first equity. home mm -hmm. and and so was it worth it to buy a, a house with an interest rate of almost nine absolutely mm -hmm. but the interest rates uh, definitely are a a, a concern for a lot of people right now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't want to sell their house because they got three percent. Yep. And they don't want to go into six and a half or seven or whatever they might get today. But again, I think what's important is what what kind of equity is sitting in your home right now. Mm -hmm. And if you sold that house and you took that equity, and even if you did finance some higher interest rate because mm -hmm. the rates are higher mm -hmm. number one could it be a great opportunity to get that move up house mm -hmm. and get that dream house now and move in that stepping stone right mm -hmm. and will you keep that six and a half or seven or whatever you get for 30 years no no in fact with the writing on the wall already with some of our indexes that are uh, big factors with interest rates they're done based, some of those indexes that can really impact rates are done uh, with 12 month averages. So we have a lot of lagging data that is higher from 2022 from worse times than we have right now. So the writing is kind of on the wall mm -hmm. that the rates will be coming down. Will it be end of 2023? Will it be 2024? Mm -hmm. But the writing is already on the wall for better rates. So should you get that house now? and maybe not pay a hundred grand higher like a lot of the clients that got three percent right right there's right. that big gap gap yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think that it's it's so important once again to don't look at it as today today this is what's happening when you're investing no matter what that investment is you're not it's not a today return what it is it's yeah. a return over the length of the period of time if it's you're putting money into mutual funds or stocks or yeah. 401ks or whatever that investment period is the number one investment it has been and i believe it always will be will be your real estate yes every that is when you're looking at people's actual assets in in their portfolios their home is their number one asset. So don't, for a minute, think that, oh, the interest rates are high today, like, like Brenda was just mentioning. It, over the long run of this loan, that is going to fluctuate, and there's going to yes. be new opportunities that are come to play. You know, everyone, we're, we're told to live in this fear factor, and we watch the national news about all this. And, and like, like she said, don't ask Mr. Googly, because he <laughs> really doesn't know. <laughs> call, yeah. call, call, your, call a lender. I, I honestly, and, and with someone with knowledge, experience, and honestly, at the end of the day, someone who really truly cares about what your future looks like and gives you that sense of, of I, 
I, I trust what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, and there's a, once again, you know, like realtors, there's a hundred billion of us out there. You have the same situation with lenders, but at in all cost, make sure it is the right fit for you. Um, make sure you're telling the story of what's happening. Like Brenda mentioned, when I bought my first house, you'll never believe it, but it was in the 1980s and it was 18% interest. Can you even imagine? <laughs> and you survived. I know, and I survived. And, and what happened when you sold your house? <laughs> oh, I made money. You made money, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And you could have rented all that time. Oh, and made nothing. And made nothing. So it's so important, even if it's that lower home that you're looking for or that step up home, what, wherever your story is today, if it's your aging parents who are, you know, no longer able to live in that home and now they need to make other living arrangements, you know, I always say, you know, talk to a lender. A lender knows what's going to go on. Financial managers are out there, but they don't have their hands on the pulse like a lender does. And I know Brenda takes calls from everyone on every step of the way, even if it's not relating to a client of yours. With yeah. your experience and knowledge, Brenda will pick up that call and say, what is it you need, and help you every step of that way with her, with your experience. And I, I, just, I just truly mean it. I think that it's super important that you are educated, you have knowledge about what's happening in today's industry, you're talking to that professional, and you're making sure that your investment is making the most that you want. And Brenda, I know we have multiple stories. We had a client we were just working with the other day who she wanted to, she, they're moving up, okay? They have their house to sell. And she was very afraid that, that she didn't have the money. She thought she was going to have to do a, a contingent offer. After she had the chance to talk to Brenda, what happened? She qualifies buying a house without selling her current home. But we have a plan. Right. We have a plan. There's a plan for when she sells that home. Right, right. So, so the point is, is that a lot of people, because they're kind of afraid to just pick up the phone and ask, which have I'm... Have a conversation. Have a, yeah, yeah. Have a conversation with that lender. Have a conversation to let people know what your dreams are for your future. Have that conversation to find out what is really happening out there in today's market. And who better than a professional? In all honesty, when I get a question from a client and it's regarding the mortgage or the pre-approval or what the lender said, I really say I'm watching what homes are coming and going on the market on a daily basis. That is what I'm doing. I'm making sure I'm comping out houses. Is the value there? Is the value not right. there? I am looking at that real estate market as far as the, you know, the, the real property. You're looking at something very different than what I'm looking at. The money. The money, the budget, <laughs> what's happening in the market. Is this the right fit for that family? Right, exactly. So that's where, that's where Brenda comes into play on that team. Um, I really think it's an important first call. Um, sometimes I'm getting calls from clients, and it, 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 you kind of got to nudge them to get over to that lending yeah. side. Just to have a conversation. Yeah, and, and it, it isn't, you know, that we're not about selling you the mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, I'm selling the home or I'm buying the home, so I'm definitely in that sales world. But your lender shouldn't be in the sales world. What they should be more is being a part of your future. Consulting. Uh, and, and you're consulting and knowing who that person is, when that person is. So I want to make sure that even if you have any question as it relates to yeah. any questions as it relates to lending, um, make one of your first calls to Brenda. She really and truly, <laughs> she right. really and truly will um, offer you a service that is a step above many. She really Thanks. does care about what she's doing. She's been in it a long time. She has tons of experience. And she will get you in the right position to purchase that dream home for you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed this conversation between Brenda, uh, Brenda and I. Her information will be on the bottom uh, of the Thank screen. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Anytime. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, and remember, I always believe you should be knowledgeable and edu educated as it relates to your new home purchase.